Hi, this is Alex Behrens. I'm the owner of Maple Leaf Coffee Roasters in Roselle, Illinois. This is going to be the first part of a series of YouTube videos that I'll be doing uh, to share some information about the coffee club that we uh, have here at Maple Leaf. Um, this is a program where we have uh, the option for club members to receive a 12 ounce bag of coffee every month uh, that is roasted in one of three different ways that is not sold to the general public and uh, get a whole bunch of extra detail and information about the roasting process, coffee itself, the flavors and the taste and what we experience when we're actually uh, uh, having this coffee um, uh, win our cup. Uh, and I think this has always been an exciting way for members of the club to have a deeper interaction with uh, coffee and learn more about the different types of coffees that are out there. So uh, just for back, uh, background, uh, Maple Leaf Coffee Roasters has been a business since 2018. Um, we are an artisan coffee roaster based in Roselle, Illinois. We sell to individuals walking into our retail storefront in Roselle and also online and to other businesses uh, via some wholesale programs as well. The Coffee Club program is truly one of those opportunities that I have as a roaster to really experiment and try different things uh, and uh, really try to uh, get a lot of people who are interested in this kind of thing to be more invested in the world of coffee. So this month, uh, I brought in a coffee from Colombia that is a shade grown coffee. And one of the things that I'm looking forward to sharing with the club members this month is the benefits uh, of shade grown coffee and what uh, growing coffee in the shade primarily does. Um, there are some ecological benefits to shade grown coffee. Uh, definitely, if you think about a farm that's uh, instead of cutting down all of the trees that uh, you might normally do to make land uh, space for growing coffee, if you just grow coffee beans in the shade, you don't have to cut down those trees, save some, some carbon, uh, things of that nature. And shade grown coffees also have the benefit of some more complex, richer flavors. And that's an interesting um, experience for a lot of people who may never uh, get a chance to drink a shade grown coffee. So this is a coffee um, that I actually did both the shade grown coffee uh, sourced from it, um, but also did a fun little experiment with the light and medium option this month. Um, so every month I always do a light, medium and dark option and this month for the light and the medium, I actually uh, took the opportunity to roast the two of them to almost the same point. They're very close in their roast level, uh, maybe a couple of degrees off, uh, really not that much in terms of the uh, final roasting temperature out of the uh, machine. And uh, what I did instead was I roasted the light version like a light roast like I normally do, and I roasted the medium roast like a medium roast that I normally do. So the difference here being the amount of time that the coffee spends in the development phase after it's gone through its uh, uh, first crack um, and it's starting to develop a lot of the uh, flavors and, and uh, things that our coffee have. So uh, effectively what I have is three different coffees, but two of them are effectively the same roast level, uh, but one of them was roasted as though it were a light, which has shorter development time, and one of them is roasted as though I are, were approaching it as a medium roast coffee with a longer development time, and they both got to a, pretty much the same temperature on the way out. So one of the interesting things that you see as a consequence of that is that the light and the medium roasts have a really different feel to them. Even though they kind of came to the same roast level, the light coffee had more of a kind of citrusy, a little bit of a tiny fruity tint and a kind of acidity to it, a little bit of a sharpness um, that you don't normally see out of Colombian coffees. And the medium roast had much more of a smoother, more chocolatey, um, just a balanced feel to it that uh, didn't have the kind of, I don't wanna say harsh necessarily, but the kind of um, more acidic tones that you normally see out of a lighter roasted coffee. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, overall mouthfeel and the um, taste for the medium roast. Had kind of a richer, fuller body to it. Uh, again, even though the medium and the, and the light are very similar in their uh, levels, um, there was more of a smooth kind of mild chocolate tone from that medium uh, level that uh, contrasted really strongly with the kind of spice hints, a um, little bit of acidity uh, from the light roast that you saw. And the uh, light roast also had kind of a little bit of an earthy kind of green, a uh, little bit of a floral tint to it where the medium roast did not. Conventionally, what you'd see out of the Colombian coffee is something more on the fruity side. When we source Colombian coffees here for a couple of the blends that we sell, we're always looking for something that has kind of a sweet tone, maybe a little bit of nuttiness uh, is always a great addition to a coffee, um, but we're always just kind of going for something that really adds a sweet tint to it, but not like a sugary, too sugary sweet sort of thing. So the difference between those two is really interesting. Uh, nice contrast to see what the roast uh, process does to the, the coffee. Uh, on the dark roast side of things, this was a really fun coffee for a dark roast, not a super dark by our standards, 
uh, kind of on the lighter end of things that touch the second crack, which is sort of the, the marking point for when something turns into a dark roast. Um, so we kind of kept it a little bit uh, off of the uh, darker end of things uh, by our standards. And uh, the dark roast had much more of a like richer feel to it. Good body, um, but uh, not um, anything super strong um, or super bitter, uh, any that, anything like that nature. The other things that I also saw in the dark roast were kind of a spice hint to it. So interesting uh, flavor, especially out of a Colombian coffee. Usually you don't get these kind of herbal spice tones out of a Central American coffee. Uh, generally, you'll see those out of something from Asia Pacific, a Sumatra, uh, something of that nature. Um, but you got a nice kind of dark chocolate, a little bit of a graham cracker, toasted oats sort of feel for that dark roast as well. And I think that was a really compelling option. So each of these three has something really compelling to offer. I think the contrast between the light and the medium is really the place where uh, things get interesting to show what a different roasting process does. And the dark roast, uh, again, being a Colombian coffee, it's going to be on the sweeter side, which is always fun. Um, but you get a nice kind of body and that little interesting spice tone that you normally see out of like an African coffee or something from uh, the Asia Pacific. Um, so we really enjoyed this coffee this month. I'm really hoping that uh, people enjoy uh, this coffee in this month's uh, club. Um, and uh, if you're interested in joining the club, we'll keep some links in the uh, video for everyone to check that out. We have limited space in that club, so there's always maybe a little bit of a space from one month to the next. Uh, it's not something I can just toss everyone in on, unfortunately. Um, but if you're interested in it, I can always add you to a wait list and make sure that uh, something that you could get. So hope this has been fun. Uh, if this is something that you'd like to continue seeing, make sure you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we'll be doing other videos uh, for different subjects and topics for new coffees as well. Um, but I do hope that this uh, uh, opportunity to learn a little bit more about our club coffee was a good one for you. Thank you very much.